Hey guys, I finally made it to max power. This was a much easier grind than Forsaken. I'm going to tackle what we know as the power leveling system. Since there is little hard data documented about the system, some of my explanation of it is up to debate, so feel free to discuss in the comments. In past versions of the power system, there were some strategies and outliers that could help you power up, like Callus guaranteed a max power drop in Curse of Osiris. Powerful engrams from the story missions could be farmed by creating new characters. Three of the same class of Guardian could get rewards by letting milestones auto-decrypt on their alternate characters. Those things were fixed in favor of balance, but now we have bounty holding. That is, storing up a ton of powerful bounties and opening them in the next DLC, since those bounties never expire. I would not be surprised if Bungie makes it where that can't happen in the next DLC. Because having players at 645 plus on day one raid day wasn't necessarily balanced to other players that hadn't thought of the idea. There is a soft cap and a hard cap in power level. Soft basically means anything you do will help you power up. Hard means you can't get anything higher. The soft cap is still 500. The hard cap is 650. Meaning it will take a lot for new players to progress in this game. A catch-up mechanic was introduced so that players under 600 will see prime engrams more often and they will get better boost to power. So essentially we can say that the grind from 600 to 650 will be as rough as usual. The recommended power for things wasn't changed, meaning naturally it should be easier to get higher scores for nightfalls, easier to complete existing content, and new ways to power up with new content. In Forsaken they introduced a sort of tiered system mostly based on the activity's power requirements, and that mostly carried into the system we have now. So as a base rule of thumb, the higher the activity you are completing, the higher your reward can potentially be. Also, the higher your overall power is, the lower your rewards will be. This is more easily seen in The Last Wish. The opening encounter to the end encounter has distinguishably different power requirements. And so, the rewards are also different. If you are 647 and you complete Kali, you will get a 649 drop. If you complete Shuro, you can also get a 649 drop. But if you complete Morgoth, you will get a 650 drop. Same with Vault and Riven. Meaning the first two were plus 2 over your overall power level, while Morgoth and onwards was plus 3. In Forsaken, if you were 596 and you did Morgoth, you would get a plus 2 drop. If you're 598 and you completed Morgoth, you would get a plus 1 drop. So I can easily say that this new system is easier to hit max level than the last, because in the previous system, almost all of the powerful drops went to plus 1 drops when you're around 590. And with this system, Morgoth always drops a plus 3 or higher, which is insanely better. An example of the most dramatic difference in power level drop would be Radiant Frame Armory Weapons. When you're starting out, these weapons are around plus 6, plus 7. And as you power up, they are less powerful. When you reach 644, the forge weapon is a plus 4. When you reach 645, the forge weapon is a plus 3. Meaning doing them when you're 644 gives the same power drop as doing it as a 645. And you will probably notice this while doing the raid. You will get a drop that's less powerful than your last drop further along in the raid. And that's what I mean by saying the more powerful you are, the less powerful your drops will be. How does one power level and level successfully? Have one guardian of each class at max level, which is 50 right now. The key thing is to focus on one character at a time, starting with your highest character. Doing all of the milestones you can possibly do on that one character, then transferring that character's weapons to your second character, and doing all your milestones, and then the same with your third. If you can do that for two to three weeks, you will likely have reached max power in the game. That's a lot of time and effort though. If you don't have that much time to play, what's the best way to level? Focusing on one character. When you get max power weapons, transfer them to your second character and then focus on that character until they reach max power, same with your third. If you want to maximize your rewards, pick milestones that are more valuable than others or take less time. Forge weapons, primes, exotics, forge weekly, and the new raid are the quickest way to power up. But the quickest activities would be the dailies. And doing a 100k nightfall should get you the regular one for two rewards at once. The last wish raid at this point isn't bad for time commitment and getting okay rewards. There are other things that can help you out too, like knowing when you should get a high level drop versus grinding out smaller drops. Say if you're a 647, 
You wouldn't want to do the first two encounters of the Last Wish because you know they will drop 649. But you'd want to do Morgoth and Onward before all the other powerful drops because you know they will be max. And if you can get max reward gear, do that first. Blue farming on alts can also help you reach max. That is, grinding out blue or legendary armor from enemy kills to upgrade your armor without using powerful drops. I covered a more in-depth video on this recently. Most of power leveling is RNG, but tons of guides, spreadsheets, and tricks have come about in the last year. You should use your guaranteed weapon and armor drops to your advantage. The weekly armory milestone is guaranteed armor. The Radiant Frames, Breakneck, Loaded Question, Ace of Spades, and Chaperone are guaranteed weapons. Collecting them when that slot's power is really low can significantly increase your overall power level in the long run. Your milestone order should be determined on the power of each tier of rewards. Forge weapons, primes, exotics from enemy kills, forge weekly, and the new raid will give you powerful drops. We are talking plus 6 or higher until you get closer to the power cap. The next tier would be Gambit, Weekly Bounties, Petra Weekly Milestone, and the Raid Challenge Bounties. Third would be Morgoth and Onward, Dreaming City 8 Daily Bounties, and Tier 4 Blind Well Heroic. Fourth would be the first two last Wish Encounters, Weekly Dreaming City Mission, 100k Nightfall, Regular Nightfall, and Ascendant Challenge. Fifth tier would be Daily and Weekly Challenges, Ikora, Flashpoint, and the Spider Bounty. Clan Angrams would be sixth tier. After 600, clan engrams are guaranteed plus ones. Daily and weeklies are plus twos. Everything between weeklies and Morgoth is iffy. They're sometimes plus twos and sometimes plus threes. Gambit weekly, Petra weekly, and raid challenges are usually plus three to plus fours, and the highest drops are usually plus six and up. We don't have Shattered Throne yet, but I would assume that it's in the plus three, maybe plus four range. It seemed to me that certain things were always plus three, but I can't say for certain. Those would be the Breakneck, Loaded Question, Ace of Spades, Chaperone, Major PvP and Gambit Rank Ups, and Clan XP. Most of the time you would leave your powerful drops until last, but doing something powerful like the Black Armory Frame, and then doing smaller milestones to bring your gear up is also a solid strategy. That way you have a few overly powered drops to bring up your other ones. The only downside of this is that if you get a drop in that slot, it will be less than what you currently have equipped, effectively wasting the drop. This is what prevents players from reaching high levels, having too many wasted drops, which is totally up to RNG. If you're here after listening to this video and still looking at the background with cheese on, then I hope you have a good RNG this week. Cheese forever, Guardian.